up uh, preseason number one, Texas A&M Commerce, head coach Colby Carthel, Garrett, Blue Ball, Brooks Sadoff, and Christoph Martinez. All right, welcome up, guys. Colby, I'm going to turn it over to you for some opening statements. I appreciate it. And uh, is that working? What do I do? There we go. Bill shut this off on me, didn't burn it. <laughs> Uh, no, just excited to be here again for another media day, and, and uh, these three guys who've got up here, uh, really, really proud of them. Over here, we've got Garrett Blueball, and uh, he's an Elite 90 Award winner. It's, you know, good news for all the offense coordinators out there in the LSC. He's going to forego his senior year to go to med school, and uh, fantastic 3.9 GPA. And Christoph Martinez, one of the more interesting stories in all of college football. Uh, he uh, swam the river when he was eight years old. He's an undocumented Im immigrant. He's a dreamer, a DACA uh, individual, and he should be the poster child for that. Uh, you know, he's a 4.0 student. He's already graduated with a uh, degree in business, working on his master's, and heck of a kicker, heck of a guy. He's got a chance if we have some success this year to become the all-time leading scorer in the Lone Star Conference, and that's a lot of great players over 80-something years and uh, just a tremendous uh, human being. Then we got Buck set off here. Really good linebacker. He's the one that's not so smart of, of these three. He's uh, graduating with his degree in engineering, carries a 3.7 something GPA, and, and is a really good football player. So excited about these guys being up here. Excited about the uh, 2018. This is my uh, 24th straight year in the, in the Lone Star Conference, and 31st if you count my years as a ball boy at, over in Portales. So uh, never, never been more excited about you know uh, a, a season just going into it. Our program is. We're, uh, you know, set. We've been in it five full years and, uh, you know, encouraged Western New Mexico and Coach Tristan over there. Five years ago, we sat up here and we were dead last. Worst team in the country. And, and uh, you know, build it right. And five years from now, hopefully uh, you guys can be having some tremendous success. Don't be discouraged. Getting picked last. Get mad and get after them. Okay? But time flies when you're having fun and, and it's five years into it and our program's set. We're, we like where we're at. And, uh, you know, one thing that gets lost, we, we played 17 freshmen in that national championship game. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of guys that got some postseason awards and everything else. But we're excited about the future. Had most of our team there this spring. And uh, so just looking forward to a, to a fun year in 2018. Well, you're on a roll, Colby. So uh, let's, let's carry that on. Can you just give me some general thoughts on uh, winning the Division II national championship last year and uh, just really what it took from your team to make that championship run? Well, I think, uh, you know, the most important thing you says is last year. You know, that trophy says 2017 on it, and uh, this is a new year. So, uh, but, you know, looking back on it, you know, it was a, a special uh, run, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I tell everybody that, that we won that national championship on September 24th, and that was the day after we had played Kingsville, and th these guys, we went, stayed an extra night in Corpus and did over 400 hours of community service uh, there at Port Aransas, ground zero for Hurricane Harvey, and, and I believe that. These guys learn to uh, be a part of something bigger than themselves, and, and that's what it takes to, uh, to, to be a champion is, uh, is put, put the team, uh, team first. And, and, and it, it came, came to fruition. You know, we lost, uh, I think it was eight starters that we started against Winona. We had eight players that started that game that weren't able to compete uh, and got hurt uh, in, in the national championship game. And that's, that's a lot of... Uh, a lot of bodies, but, but when, you, when you're building something and that chemistry was just, you know, something special. And I, I really think that that day in Port Aransas had a lot to do with that. But it was, uh, you know, fun to win. Uh, 35 years, it's how long it had been since Jim Wacker in, in Southwest Texas had won it. And there's been a lot of tremendous teams and programs uh, over that time that, that weren't able to get it done. You know, Fred's been around, was this year number 50 for you, Fred? So that's one of the titans of the Lone Star Conference over there. And he's seen some great teams that... Texas A&I, and, you know, Coach Witten had some great teams. We had some good ones at, at West Texas, and, and uh, you know, but, it, you know, finally pushed through after 35 years. It was, it was great for the Lone Star, and, and it was fun. You know, ever, ever coach in this room text or called me every week, except for Coach Tristan. You know, he didn't, but, uh, you know, that was, that was neat to see because as a, as a league, we're stronger together, and it was, it was good to, uh, you know, you probably text after the game, my phone broke. I wasn't trying to big time you guys. If, I didn't respond, but that was that was just fun to really win it for the Lone Star Conference. This is a great league, and, and uh, so it was a fun run. 
Garrett, last season you made over half your 84 tackles in the postseason. Uh, what was the key to you making so many tackles during that championship run? Yeah, so in the postseason, you know, you're not promised the next game. And so uh, realizing that this could potentially be my last game and it could pot potentially be the seniors' last game. So I guess playing for the seniors was really what drove me in, throughout the postseason. Brooks, you're, uh, you've led the Lions in uh, tackles the last two seasons. Can you talk about your role on the defensive side of the ball? Well, as a leader on the defensive side of the ball, I really have to set the example. Even though we have so many returning guys, they're still going to be young guys. They're still going to be you know, guys looking for, for guidance. And I really have to try to set that example, set the standard for uh, how we're going to you know, go about this season and try to be one of the best defenses we can be. Christoph, with uh, 24 field goals last season, you tied the LC for record for most field goals in a season and became just the sixth Division II player to have 24 field goals in a season. Uh, what's the most important aspect of the kicking game for you? Uh, for me personally, I mean, I play soccer since I was six years old, you know, and it comes naturally. And God's given me that talent. So um, being a kicker, a lot of people think that it's super easy. You know, you just go there, kick the ball, and then walk out of the field. But it's just the, the mentality that you put into the games. You know, you, you understand what your offense is doing, and you want to help them as much as possible. Let's say I had a mentality they're like, oh, they're about to score, and then put me in, and I miss. And, I'm, and I say, well, I'll get a next chance. It's not the next chance. It's just that your team is putting so much effort into it that you as well got to put that effort. So just having that mentality of helping the team uh, overcome uh, the next play and, uh, and then uh, trusting you in the process. Is, you know, that trusting that you have a, a good kicker uh, to back you up in case you don't get the touchdown. So yeah, I think that that's the most important part of a kicker. Garrett, Colby mentioned this, but last year you received the NCAA Elite 90 Award, which is presented to the student athlete with the highest cumulative grade point average participating at the final site for each of the NCAA's 90 championships. Can you talk about how you've been able to balance academics and football? Uh, you don't. I just... You just got to find time to study. Um, it's whether it's on the bus, late at night, in a hotel room, and in the dorm room. Um, you know, God gave me the ability, and I just try to do it all for him. Brooks, what's been your uh, favorite non-football memory of commerce? Favorite non-football memory would have to be all the great opportunities I've had to reach out and help out communities, especially down in Kingsville for that hur Hurricane Harvey relief. That was great. And it's it's really just, in terms of non-football, how great all the players are at hanging out outside of football. You know, we'll go to the rec center, play some sand volleyball, go swimming, play ping pong, and beat Garrett a bunch. <laughs> Stuff like that. That's, that's, that's been the best. <laughs> and Christoph, last one for you. What's been your favorite, or what was your favorite memory from last year's championship run? Oh, man. Um, Championship run, I would say Central Washington. You know, double overtime, uh, 35 degrees, and you're just, it's raining, and there's no lights in the stadium, and it just seems like it's a never ending game. You know, we come back from 28 7, we tied the game with double overtime, and go in there, and all the pressure's on me. At least that's what it seems like. You know, at that time, I wasn't focused on the pressure or anything else, and I just go out there and execute, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm being carried on the, um, my team's shoulders, and I'm like, oh, well, I guess we did this. You know, we go to the next round. We go to the next round, uh, Minnesota again, kick the game. Uh, not a game-winning field goal, but it was, a, it was a really impactful field goal that I was able to kick and um, break my, my record for that. And just uh, team bonding, you know, the love for the game, the love that we have for each other is just really important, and that's how. I'll All say. right. Texas A&M Commerce preseason number one. Thanks, guys.